do them is like muck dungeon bar. My name is Darren McGregor. I'm um, Ojibwe of the Sagamuk Inish Anabek First Nation. I was born in 1973. Um, I would say that my life started as a as a as a result of policy, um, my location to where I was raised was uh, due to government um, decisions on, on who is considered to be Native and who isn't considered to be Native. So right from uh, the get-go, my life has been affected by, um, by government's decisions. So just like, say, um, my grandpa, he fought in the war and he uh, enfranchised, so he lost his status. and. Um, because uh, he had no status when his children were born, uh, they lost their status, and as well as my grandmother who married him lost her status. So they they were um, sent off reserve. The uh, Indian agent told them they were no longer allowed to live on the reserve, so they had to move off Sagmook and move over to um, out in Spanish Ontario in this little town. Um, my mom married my dad and. She too lost her status because of that, so they had to live out in Spanish when uh, I was growing up. And from there, um, living off reserve, the, um, the the disconnect from kinship of family. Like um, if you had to go visit somebody, you had to travel uh, quite a far distance, and vice versa. And families were living, uh, coming to visit us. So it's just like. Um, kind of like a little off-cast sort of setting because we weren't allowed to live on a reserve. So it was about 1980, about six or seven years old, when my mom um, divorced my dad, and uh, well, not divorced, but separated from my dad and moved to Toronto. Uh, growing up in Toronto as a young guy in a, in a city of a few million people, finding who I was was a challenge in itself. Um, uh, my mom is a, uh, um, a survivor of the residential school, and um, she had her um, her little uh, trials and tribulations and trauma of um, being in the schools and being abused, and uh, she made some of her choices in life that uh, were because of her trauma, and um, uh, I witnessed a lot of that trauma uh, that she uh, self-induced with herself, so seen a lot of lot of uh, hurt with my mom growing up. Um, I'm the youngest of uh, six of us, and um, a lot of the older ones were uh, already, uh, from what I can remember, starting to use going out in the party scene and living that kind of lifestyle. Um, so, as I grew older, my kind of lifestyle was kind of set for me because that's what I've seen in my life is uh, a lot of um, people who used alcohol and used drugs and um, my mom partook in some, some organizations like ONWA or Métis Nation in Ontario and was, was a, she was a fluent language speaker but never taught us and she would come home from different meetings where she was asked to do openings in the language and she had her feather and her tobacco and so we kind of knew uh, just a small lit, little amount or I guess they would say bongi it the go just a little bit and um, the, um, the the curiosity of who we were was there um, I seen a lot of our people visibly visibly in the um, in the downtown core of Toronto um, who were on the streets and drinking like Listerine and, and then a lot of my older brothers and my uh, older cousins and siblings and my mom and all of them, they all did a lot of drinking as well. So that's, that's where my um, uh, sense of identity was in uh, seeing who we were. Throughout many times of, uh, of, of uh, you know, sorrow and, um, and uh, sad times in life, um, that's when like, uh, turn to Creator, you know, turn to uh, the ceremonies and turn to, uh, turn to um, that spiritual aspect to uh, kind of pull myself out of that negative funk. It was, uh, it was kind of uh, hard times. And so, um, as I started learning more about who we were, um, I went to uh, drum and 
powwows and started learning a little bit more as the uh, the doors opened, starting to see the sweat lodge, starting to see the fasting, and those doors opened more doors where we started seeing uh, like pipes and whistles and starting knowing more about uh, our medicines and starting learning more about um, our identity of spirituality and how we are a spiritual being um, and knowing that that there's more to our existence than just this physical realm that we live in and having a better understanding of, of our spiritual connection to uh, creator and our physical connection to earth and how to finally um, tune those two together in existence with uh, ceremony and medicines it, it created that balance in life that I, that I was achieving for and striving for to uh, stay away from um, when I was uh, using um, alcohol and finding myself like in those in those depressive states so it's uh that's how I started learning more about our traditional ways and started learning more about um what our elders had to say and understanding how their connection to um, life is a is a way that's that's uh, more than just just a, a living it's, it's, a, it's a great way so with that uh, I'll see you much you know um, I started looking at the, the term knowledge and I was um, listening to some Ojibwe language lessons on the uh, through various um, programs that, that people have, you know, uh, started out there like, this is how you say hello in Ojibwe, Ani, hello, Ani. And um, as I was listening to these these uh, lessons, I was kind of uh, enjoying them, and then I started thinking to myself, well, our people never learn the language the way it's being instructed. It's just like. It's like we, be, we are being taught English first and then we're learning our language through English. And it's like, you know, a long time ago we didn't have these CDs or these lessons to learn the language. They would just speak to you. And you would just learn by, by being with the uh, people who were, who were uh, speaking the language and, and teaching you. And uh, if you didn't understand, they would they would find ways to uh, help you understand. And I found that uh, that was a little interesting as I was going along. And I started thinking about other things about our indigenous education and how our people learned. And a lot of um, a lot of our people learned by doing and um, by experiencing. And you know, when we go out in the bush and. Uh, it's hard to uh, explain somebody how to hunt moose by telling them how to do it or writing it down for them and giving instructions. It's like when you go in the bush and you go harvest moose, you're out there, you're talking to the land, you're talking to, uh, talking to the ancestors, you're talking to that spirit of that moose, and you're understanding the, um, the, uh, the lay of the land and you're understanding how there's many different... Uh, Places where moose may be, they may be in the swamp, they may be in the hardwood. Um, there's bulls, there's cows, there's calves. What time of season you're out there? So there's like so much to learn. And like every time I harvested a moose, it's always been different every time. So it's just like uh, that that whole learning through experience is uh, is is, uh, is pretty important in being out there and uh, to uh, to you know be with somebody who's experienced who knows and them sharing with you um, that's where I find a lot of our education really really happens um, you see a lot of our young guys who uh, eventually go working in the bush with their with their uh, our older loggers and they're, they're out there with the skitters they're out there with the uh, the chainsaws and they're teaching the young ones how to how to cut the trees and they're teaching them how to do this and it's like it's a little bit difficult to uh, do that through a book, through reading. Um, there's um, the the to me one of the one of the things that we really really need to focus on is our language and uh, 
I find it a little bit scary. Like, I think it was 20 years ago that we've had uh, maybe like 30% of our uh, population were fluent speakers, and then here we are 20 years later, we're down to like maybe 20, 15%. And then 20 years from now, how many more fluent speakers will we have from there? Will we be down to 5%? And so it's just like, uh, um, I find that, that our our uh, government is the one that's responsible for that that destination of our of our language, and it, they should be the ones who are responsible for making sure that our language is strong. They should be providing more resources. Um, you hear about all these uh, these language uh, apps and these language programs, and and um, I don't feel that our government, who's done this to us, is doing much more to um, fix what they have uh, done. Um, we, the language itself is, uh, is very, very instrumental in knowing. Um, they would say that our language is more about feeling than it is about uh, talking. It's a feeling language. And um, it's a, when we're helping our, our youth, it's like uh, if they would know the language, they would have more feeling involved with it. And they, that, that sense of identity and that sense of purpose. and with the uh, identity comes belonging and when our youth are going through life and they have this uh, this disconnect from the community because they don't have the language they don't have the culture that disconnect creates that that uh, that, that sense of uh, isolation that sense of loneliness and it's when they start getting involved with the culture that they start having a sense of belonging. They sense they have that sense of uh, being wanted. They have a sense of purpose for for being needed. So that that's all in the, with the uh, learning, right? In our education, and our education system doesn't necessarily touch base on what's needed to learn for our uh, our youth because it encompasses ceremony. It encompasses. Uh, language it encompasses uh, out on the land and it encompasses that that connection to the uh, older ones they say that in uh, that time of life where our youth are to be uh, directly with our elders and they're the ones who are who are getting our elders uh, wood water taking care of their fires um, maybe clearing the snow for them and bringing, if they need some stuff and medicines in the bush to harvest, they're already learning those things, and and that has been kind of separated by this by this new education system, where our, their teachers now are um, middle-aged people, teaching them one specific uh, lesson in English and and math or geography and. That, that connect to those elders who would be there teaching them about medicines, teaching them about how to snare a rabbit. That's not there anymore. And that's, that's when we talk about that, that sense of identity and that sense of uh, uh, connection and that, that being that feeling of belonging, that's where that is. And our education system needs to uh, kind of reflect our traditional values. So we need more of the... Uh, in, or the uh, support from our elders, our grandparents, and uh, and we've, we're finding too that a lot of um, that one-on-one -on -one support is is a is more um, is more comforting than bringing out ten or twenty with one elder because again you're not getting that that uh, that that direct connection. You're not getting that uh, individual um, individual existence. You know where they're like I'm um, I'm here with. 15 people and we're learning from one elder and I'm not um, I'm not being seen I am I can just sit back here and not um, do anything and I can just sit here and uh, to, to whoever I'm not existing and uh, I'm okay with that whereas if you were kind of on a one-on-one -on -one, they wouldn't have that feeling of I don't exist they have that feeling of that of I belong they have that feeling like I'm needed so that that a uh, whole process needs to uh, be very individualistic, small groups, and um, carrying on our traditions through that, that value of uh, connection to that youth and elder. Um, I find that when I uh, when I talk with the younger one and I'm sharing the uh, 
stories of, of our uh, understanding in life and how that connection to creator and that connection to the ancestors and that connection to the future generations. Uh, I find that when we, when we uh, do things, either we're uh, making a hand drum or we're sitting at a drum or, or uh, we're talking about hunting, we're out in the bush hunting and, or we're uh, out ice fishing or on the lake fishing or we're gathering medicines and just that, that time together and that travel is a uh, it's nice time to uh, share with them and um, as we're out there we're, we're, uh, we're experiencing life we're, uh, we're experiencing uh, that beauty that, that creator has, um, has bestowed upon us eh? and uh, we share that, that talk about how creation and how a creator created the world and creator created the universe and creator created the, uh, the other realms that are out there whether it's the water world or the spirit world and, and how that um, when creator finally made mother earth he made mother earth absolutely beautiful it was, uh, it was, uh, it was so beautiful that, that when creator cried it was uh, those tears of joy and he said that's where the first rains our, um, we, also, we also tell our little ones that, that Creator made this area of where we are from along the North Shore of Lake Huron to, uh, from like North Bay to Sault Ste. Marie and the mountains and the, um, the lakes that are here and how it's like, uh, we say it's the most beautiful place in the world. And uh, Creator made this most beautifulest place in the world for His most beautifulest children. And as those those uh, most beautiful children um, of Creator, He gave us a beautiful way of life. So I always say that, that our way of life is is very special. It's it's so beautiful that we have our ceremonies. It's so beautiful that we're experiencing uh, the the dawn of the. Uh, the, uh, the spring with the uh, new growth and those flowers blooming then we get into summer and we experience that great heat and then the fall time we have the beautiful colors of Mother Earth putting on her beautiful dress and then in the winter time we have the, uh, the Mother Earth puts on her blanket and has her rest and, and uh, hardly many places in the world get to experience that eh? and we say that it's, it's, a, it's a blessing that, that we are um, in an area that we're able to experience uh, all places of the world in one place and all this beautiful water that we have around and all these animals that, that are here that live with us and teach us how to live and uh, we always tell the little ones too that you know a bear does bear things a moose does moose things a fish does fish things a uh, mosquito does mosquito things and they all live the way Creator instructed them to and it's, it's just us human beings that have changed throughout time and we don't live the way Creator instructed us to live, eh? It's just like we have our set of rules that Creator told us to live by and as we start progressing into the future we're not living the way Creator instructed us to, eh? This is like we take care of the land, we take care of each other, we share, we, uh, we live through our heart, we don't live through our mind. And, and all, those, all those laws of Creator that instructed us to live by are there in that sacred fire and we're to sit with that fire to, uh, to um, offer our tobacco to have, have that support from Creator. So it's just like um, we have this, this way of life that we need to live in. And, um, we're kind of uh, making life more um, more for us as human beings than we are for our, our animals that are here. Or this is this home belongs to our animals just as it just as much as it belongs to us, and we don't have more of a right to this land than those animals do, and we need to uh, keep that in mind when we uh, go forward in the future. It's just like those trees. They have a right to be here as well. They have a right to life, just as we do. So we need to respect our trees. We need to respect all of our plants. And we need to respect our uh, animals. So, you know, um, there's a lot of medicine that's out in that bush. And the more we take away from uh, uh, those medicines, then 
the more we're going to be uh, uh, unhealthy because, you know, someday there may be some species that have been completely wiped out and those are the species that may be the ones that need to save us. So we have to always, always keep in mind how special the other species are on this planet with us and we uh, have to take care of them.